welcome to a new video and this will be a mixture between a tech view vlog and a safe jazz podcast because the topic you can read it in the title of course will be the swipe ui of huawei emotion ui 11 versus safe jazz swipe ui so we want to compare this on both devices here to see uh, which has the cleverer swipe user interface like which swipes make more sense on an Android system, like here Motion UI, or on Safish OS, which from the ground up has been built as a swipe operating system. Yeah, we'll compare these two swipe systems basically on the Mate 30 Pro and the Sony Xperia 10 Plus running Safish OS, running Motion UI 11. Have fun! So let's get started. On the left you can see my Huawei Mate 30 Pro and on the right you can see my Sony Xperia 10 Plus device. Let's start with the Android application or the Android Emotion UI of Huawei and the swipe gestures there. Uh, as you see I unlocked the device with my fingerprint and now I have the option to just start applications on the home screen and let's just start an application and sh I show you how to go back to the home screen. It's a simple swipe up. And you can see a nice indicator showing me which application I last opened up. Let's see this again. I have this application open. You can see the animation and if I close it, you can see the animation indicating me which application I had last opened. Within an application, if I'm in an application and I go, for example, to overview, I have the option to go one step back by just simply providing, uh, by simply um, using a swipe gesture from the edge either left or right to go back and you can see a little arrow will appear, appear to tell me indicate me that I'm now going back if I let go and this also works in between apps let's for example go into the Twitter app and I just want to read this article here that someone mentioned in a tweet I click on it and say I want to open it with Firefox it will open up in a new application Firefox but let's say I want to go back to my Twitter feed I don't have to close Firefox and then click on my Twitter again what I can do is just simply swipe back and it will close the application or not close but it will bring back my Twitter application because it stores which application I came from a very nice and handy feature now let's say I want to go back to my TV program app and as Android is not closing applications in the background it should be still open how to get that what I have to do is just simply swipe up and hold and if I let go now, I see a list. It automatically jumps to the last open application, in this case Firefox, because we swiped back from Firefox to go to Twitter. And if I swipe to the left, you can see there is my TV program app. And I can go in here. And the same thing if I swipe up again and let go, you see it will automatically, automatically jump to my Twitter app. So I can simply jump between two applications very fast and quickly. Let's close this and show you another swipe gesture, which is the swipe gesture from above. If you swipe from above, no matter where, but you have to, it has to be from above, you can see the notification panel down here and the quick toggles up there, which allows you to yeah, have, uh, in this case, five different quick toggles. If you want to have more quick toggles, you can swipe down here and you can see a lot of more quick toggles to turn off your um, notifications to turn on flight mode uh, to turn off the mobile data and a lot a lot of more things you can quickly edit this and add more stuff if you want to then you have your notifications in this case I have two notifications because telegram and signal want to yeah, notify me or signal me that they have to run in the background and to run in the background all the time to get new messages they put some notifications in here but the good thing is, if I am in an application and I swipe on the top, I can still reach those notifications and my quick toggles to yeah, do certain things. So this is a really good feature, in my opinion. There are some exceptions to those swipe gestures, like the swipe from um, down, uh, up, which will close applications. When I'm in applications that have certain parameters per parameters just like games for example so if i'm in a game uh, let's go for example smash hit here you can see first of all it's in landscape but it doesn't really matter what it changes is that the swipe from um, 
and the swipe up should be now from here. But you can see here, it tells me a message. I have to swipe again if I really want to close the application. This is a safety feature for those of you who want to play games and have the yeah, problem that sometimes accidentally they're closing their games just because they have swipe features enabled. So that means those games are aware that there are swipe features. Not the games in particular, but the Android system that opens up the game is aware that there are certain swipe gestures that might conflict with certain uh, gestures as well. And this also appears in some applications, like for example the Play Store or some other applications. And um, some applications just like Telegram. Uh, let's just go in a completely neutral chat here. Uh, this one, for example, use specific swipe features that are unusual to, uh, to, to Android's system. Like I can go back with this swipe navigation, but they also have their own swipe navigation. Just like, for example, I can just swipe from the middle and to go back. As you can see, this is an app-specific swipe feature. And as such, other applications also have app-specific swipe features that might conflict with the swipe features that I showed you right now. Just like the Edge Swipe. Google Play Services or Google Play Store has, for example, an option to yeah, open up a panel with this swipe, uh, swipe gesture from the side, which might conflict with the swipe gesture to go back. Then you can see when I'm on the home screen, those side swipe gestures are of course disabled. And when I swipe up, the only thing I then do is if I don't let go directly, let's go to another pane here, for example, of applications. If I swipe up, it will go home to my main pane. And if I swipe and hold, you can see the multitasking view engages and I have the option to close, of course, uh, all applications. Or I can say, okay, Telegram, I don't want to have running and I'll just close it up here. But what this will do is not necessarily close Telegram in the background, it's just removing it from the list of recent applications. And this not necessarily guarantees me that those applications are really closed. Uh, as you can see here, that uh, Telegram is still running in the background, the push service uh, is still running in the background. Now let's go to Selfish S and let's uh, see um, the swipe gestures there and the differences to the Android swipe gesture system, at least when it comes to the Emotion UI. So let me unlock this with my fingerprint as well. And the main thing that you see, the main difference that you can see here right now is that I don't, the home screen does not consist of applications that are not running right now or running, depending on if I started it. The home screen uh, exists or uh, consists of applications that are currently running. So all these this tiles that you can see here, applications that are really currently running. Like for example here, my podcasting application. If I want to go back to my home screen, all I have to do is swipe from either the edges. I will use this edge, I will explain to you later why. And I'm on back on my home screen. One very interesting feature about this tile system being live, so those applications are still running in the background, is that you can for example, run a video in the background. Let me go just here and just open up a video. Just make sure that the volume is turned down. Uh, what I can do is here, you can see the video is still running here as a live tile. The cool thing about this is if I want to perform some kind of multitasking uh, view, I can just go here, read about stuff and if I only want to peek which, on which position my video is right now, I can just hold here, it becomes transparent. If I let go now, it will just simply minimize the application. But if I hold here and then just go back, I'm back in my application. And as the home screen is basically the multitasking view in Android, or something comparable, I have the option, of course, then to simply switch between op applications. How do I start applications? By a swipe from down under here. So a swipe from to the top, basically. And this allows me to open up applications, just like, for example, the clock. 
The cool thing about this feature, this gesture, is that it allows me to open up applications when another application is running without going to the home screen. So all I, this is very efficient if you want to start a lot of application or switch between applications. What I can do is here just swipe up and you can see the app tray, app drawer can, comes up and I can just simply open up another application just like, uh, for example, a media application and it will open up my media application. What other swipe features do I have? There's another swipe feature. You might um, know the swipe feature from Android that I showed you before, swiping from the top down, which will allow you to see uh, quick tokens. I can also do this here by either swiping from the top down here, or this cool thing I have on the home screen also the option to just swipe down like this. As I mentioned before, Android, certain Android versions also have this option. What I can see here is basically the same structure as an Android, but a bit more um, limited on a certain amount. I only see quick toggles and quick actions here. Just like uh, on Android I have the option to change certain things like turn on Wi-Fi, uh, turn on the airplane mode, uh, turn on my location data, but I also have some quick actions just like for example I want to create a new note, I want to set an alarm, I want to take a selfie. I have also the option to rearrange and of course edit all this stuff just by press and holding here. I can either go to the settings of this specific uh, uh, thing or I can just press and hold here and say organize and then I have the option to rearrange stuff um, if I want to or what I can also do is just pre pressing on this here and then say uh, go to the settings of this. And I go to the settings and I have the option to just toggle certain things off like the quick toggles here or even the quick actions if I want to just like search in uh, the internet or search on the internet and add a lot of more uh, settings that I want to add to my quick toggle or quick action menu. Then another difference between Android and Selfish OS is that here is no back button or no back um, gesture in this case. What you can see here is an indicator that s tells me in the top left corner that there's a page there. So what I can do is just as you saw in the Telegram app from everywhere on this page you can just say okay I want to swipe back and now I'm, I'm a step back. This step back is not a back button like an Android because it only works in one singular application. So I cannot swipe back from one application to another application just like on Android with the swipe back gesture. Then of course I have the option always to show my menu, also like in Android if I swipe from the top to show my quick toggles and quick actions. Like I have the option to swipe to show all my applications installed and open up another application. But there's another option as well in Selfish which is pretty handy for especially large um, applications or large displays. Um, you can see that there's a line, a blue line going here and a blue line also down here. What this says, it, there's a pull down menu. Pull down menu means if I'm in a list and I want to go up to the top, I have an indicator that says if I want to pull further, I can see a menu. And this is a menu that with haptic feedback and visual feedback marks several entries in this menu and if I let go over the marked menu entry it will open up this entry or it will execute this command. This is a pretty handy and nifty feature especially on long devices like the Xperia 10 that Selfish OS has. And as you can see here the indicator in the top left indicates I can go back just by swiping back. <coughs> There is, with the missing of the back button or a back button feature, this means when I'm opening up, for example, an article here in, uh, um, if I find an article here to open up in the web browser, there is a certain problem that I cannot easily go back with one gesture to my Twitter application. So the only thing that I can do is to simply say, okay, I don't want this and I will go back to my Twitter application manually. It's a bit of a slow process I think, but maybe Selfish OS can improve on this in the future. Another thing that you can see in contrast to most of the Android applications, I did not I think 
uh, you let me just open up Firefox here to show you uh, is that uh, especially on larger screens and those devices are I think pretty comparable also I think this is a bit taller of the device the Xperia 10 and the Mate 30 most of the um, applications use the bottom for items that you have to click on that you can click on just like menus here for example in my browser on Android however you find sometimes um, navigation buttons on the top like here for example if I want to switch between tabs here I have it on the bottom to switch between tabs or click on uh, different bookmarks so this is a very uh, interesting difference here as well where you can see that Savage S in certain terms has a more modern UI when it comes to usability uh, with a larger um, yeah, screens that have to be operated then of course there are some um, other interesting facts like for example you saw the notification area is missing here because the notification area is located here to the left and as you can see here I have several notifications here that I can click on I also have some widgets here that I can click on if I like to there's a nice uh, up, uh, setting in Selfish OS um, settings which allows me to say I want to have a quick, S, quick access to this events screen by just swiping from the left edge so usually when I have this deactivated swiping from the right edge and from the left edge will do the same thing if I have this activated swiping from the left edge will bring up my notifications and as you can see I have the same feature as in the peaking mode I can just peek hold don't let go and then go back to go back to my applications if I just want to see my notifications a very handy feature indeed then of course there's another uh, gesture which allows uh, me to just close applications by swiping down now you say swiping down from up here will open this yeah but this is if you swipe from the middle if you swipe from the side down you can see a nice application uh, animation and an application X here which tells me or indicates me that I'm closing this application right now and these applications if you close them are really closed so there's nothing running in the background likewise I can also just hold here and see all applications I can close multiple applications or I can just say I want to close them all and all of the applications are closed really closed also a big big difference I think this concludes my little video of, and comparison between the swipe gestures and swipe features of Emotion UI 11 and Android in general perhaps with the new Android version and Selfish OS I would like to hear your opinions about which do you think has the more advanced swipe feature should Android learn a bit of swipe features from Selfish OS should Selfish OS adopt some of the swipe features from Android I would like to read about this in the comments and uh, happy discussion about this and if you like such videos give it a thumbs up thumbs up and uh, uh, subscribe and until the next time bye